Today we're looking at the steps you go through to buy your first home. Understanding this journey can help manage your stress during this big event in your life. We won't go into much depth at each of these steps, but we have a lot of detailed articles on our website. Okay, step one, which means getting a pre-approval. Before you start going to auctions and bidding wildly on whatever takes your fancy, you need a pre-approval from a bank. A pre-approval is basically a promise from a bank or finance company to lend you up to a maximum sum of money. It may have a list of conditions you need to meet. This is called a conditional letter of offer. A pre-approval with no conditions is creatively called an unconditional letter of offer. There is always an expiry date to a letter of offer, usually two to three months from the date of the pre-approval. This isn't long, but don't worry, you can easily renew the offer, making it ultimately valid for six months. Contacting a mortgage broker is the first step to determine whether you are ready to apply for a pre-approval and to get the ball rolling. Getting pre-approval comes down to proving your deposit and proving your income. Note that the payments for any debts will be taken into account when the bank calculates your income. Your broker will take you through the pre-approval process, so don't worry too much about the finer details at this stage. Just think income and deposit to get a pre-approval from the bank. So you have your pre-approval, it's time to go house hunting. When you find a property you'd like to buy, do your due diligence. This usually means ordering a limb, ordering a building report, getting your lawyer to review all the documentation and check the title for any potential issues like covenants or defects. With the advice of your lawyer and mortgage broker, you will decide whether you are making a conditional or unconditional offer. Common conditions within an offer are some time to get your finance sorted, called a finance date, satisfactory limb and or builder's report, and confirmation that insurance cover is available for the property. If you're making an unconditional offer, you will need to work with your broker to get the property approved by the bank before you submit your offer. If the property has been sold at auction, which is very common in Auckland, but less common in the more rational parts of the country, you need to have an unconditional offer of finance before bidding at the auction. Winning an auction is always an unconditional purchase. So your offer is accepted, what next? If your offer was unconditional, now is the time you pay the deposit. It's usually 10%, but can be changed if you have access to less than that. The deposit is non-refundable. If you don't end up purchasing, the vendor will keep your deposit. This is why all the checks need to be done before going unconditional. If your offer was conditional, then it's time to work with the relevant parties to meet the conditions within the agreed time frame. Once conditions are met, it's time to pay that deposit. Now you're unconditional, it's time to prepare for settlement day. The first thing to do is provide your lawyer with your IRD number and a copy of your license or passport. You then need to organize your home and contents insurance and call your life and health insurance advisor to let them know that your financial circumstances will be changing. Your personal insurance may need to be quite different now you've got a big old pile of debt. Two to three weeks before the settlement date, you'll need to sign your KiwiSaver first home loan withdrawal and maybe the first home grant documentation. It takes at least 10 days for this to be processed, so don't leave it too late. About the same time, you'll meet with your mortgage broker to determine your mortgage structure and interest rates. Your broker will talk you through it all to help you make the right choices for your situation. With one week to go, it's time to arrange with your lawyer to sign the loan documentation. Your lawyer will explain what you're signing as you complete the documents. It's about this time that the bank will contact you to arrange opening accounts as well. With two days to go before settlement, you will head to your new home for a pre-settlement inspection of the property. Make sure everything is working in the house and as agreed in the sale and purchase contract. It's about now that you will transfer any deposit you've saved to your lawyer's trust account. It's two days out, so it's also time to put a bottle of bubbles in the fridge to chill. On the day of settlement, the real estate agent will notify you once they have confirmation from the vendor's lawyer that the money has arrived in their account. The real estate agent will then arrange to hand over the keys. This doesn't always happen in the morning, so it pays to book your movers for later in the day. After settlement day, check that your mortgage account is set up as expected. If not, let your mortgage broker know. In the coming years, your broker is there to help you with all your mortgage questions, so keep their contact details handy for any questions in the future. So that's it in a nutshell. I hope that was helpful. As I said in the beginning, we have lots of articles on the details of what I've talked about if you want to know more. And if you've got questions, don't hesitate to get in touch. I'm Rupert Goff from The Mortgage Lab. Talk to you soon.